Welcome back, everybody, to our series covering Dune. In this episode, we'll be covering Chapter 17 in Dune. Let's get right into it. There is no escape. We pay for the violence of our ancestors. From Collected Sayings of Muad'Dib by the Princess Arulan. I don't have too much to say about this excerpt here at the beginning, except that uh, I basically agree with it. We'll pay for whatever <laughs> our ancestors have done, in a sense. Um, I guess uh, there's a lot of layers there that we could dig into. But yeah, I mean, if your parents had done something bad, then um, it's quite possible that people will look unfavorably upon you and you might pay some of the consequences. Whether that's just fight or not is another topic. This chapter moves uh, fairly quickly, so... Uh, Lady Jessica hears some um, some ruckus in the Great Hall, the Entry Hall, whatever you want to um, call it, and she she goes into it and she sees Duncan Idaho. He's come back from the town, uh, a night on the town, and in, in a drunken state, and is shouting, just being a uh, just being a drunk, and so she tries to see to him. Doctor Yui comes out. There's some people involved and in trying to just kind of calm him down, but Duncan. Uh, kind of gets mad at Lady Jessica, and um, remember, Duke Leto assigned him to watch Jessica um, under the pretense that she is a traitor, and I don't believe Duncan Idaho knows that this is a ploy by Leto, so he really thinks that Jessica might be a traitor, and Leto has assigned him to watch over her, and so he lets slip. I forget the exact words that he uses, but um, calls her um you know why would why would i believe a traitor or why why are you even here traitor um something along those lines and so um here she is and i think she kind of probably had the hunch but hearing him say it like that makes her really realize that okay um leto hawa idaho something's going on where they believe i'm the traitor or they suspect me or something else and uh, dr yui at this moment looks at jessica and just kind of stares at her and I really want to know what's going on in Yui's mind at this point, because as the traitor himself, <laughs> I don't. It must work in his favor to see all this um, confusion. And even though he's conflicted within himself as well as to hold this whole ordeal, he just stares at Jessica. And I want to know what he's thinking in his mind about her. If he's um, kind of relieved that the focus is off from him, or if he feels bad that she's being blamed for maybe being a traitor and being in that state when he's the actual one. But anyway, that would just be a, a cool glimpse into what he's thinking. So Jessica gets very angry and orders Hawat to her room. And after sitting there waiting a moment, he comes in. She forces him to sit down. Why I say force, he very strongly suggests that he sits in this chair. So he sits down. And she can sort of tell right away, just based on some responses that he gives, that he is not... Um, a traitor for House of Treaty, so she can mark that down. And she knows that he's very suspicious of her. She doesn't know yet at this moment what the Duke thinks, um, and so, but she's still trying to figure out what Hawat thinks. And she debates playing her her card as she says as she thinks about it that she's pregnant with Duke Leto's daughter, um, and that would just kind of show even further. But why would she want to tear down the house? Why would she want to? create this mess for for her daughter just a lot of a lot of ways where it just would not make sense for her to be the traitor carrying duke leto's daughter and uh and so that's kind of where this tense conversation begins dr yui gets brought up as a possible traitor but really only in jest he's laughed away just because he's gone through um the, the training that he has he has the uh, the diamond on his head that marks him that he's gone through that rigorous um um yeah training so that he essentially cannot lie um i'm sure there's more to it than that but um so they kind of laugh it away and <laughs> that's the one person that they really should be suspicious of uh but anyway uh the conversation uh continues forward and jessica um to get at Hoa and kind of have him see she kind of manages the conversation in a certain way to, to steer a direction and she mentions to Hoa that if she wanted to she could sow doubts about him in the Duke Leto's ear 
Um, and he knows this to be true. Not only is she a Ben Jesuit, but she's also very close to Duke Leto, of course. And so just kind of to just kind of show, listen, if I'm the traitor, if all these things could have happened, I could have, you know, put you down long ago um, by being this close to the Duke. She points out to Huat that um, with his abilities as a menta, as capable as they are, they tend to see past the human emotional side of things and the fact of the men getting drunk quite often is brought up actually i think this is a just a really um kind of neat moment where the insight of the men that came with house atreides because even though we focus on main characters in the house we don't see the broad picture of everyone who came into the move to arrakis and uh so hawat kind of weighs their drunk their idleness at their drunkenness as pure idleness that you know they got nothing better to do so they're just going to get drunk whereas uh jessica states well no they you took them from their home you know we took them from their home they this isn't home for them and so they feel um they feel left out they feel like they don't have a place to go uh, this is not their place. And so maybe a little bit of idleness involved in there, but it's a feeling of kind of being lonely in a way. The conversation ends in great fashion where Jessica has already steered the conversation in a way where she can precisely get Hawat to see that she is not the traitor of House Atreides. And just as Hawat is standing up to uh, to leave, to make a motion, she commands him to sit down, to sit down using the voice. And he sits down and is bewildered by her power. And she tells him that not many people um, have are living that have seen that type of power be put upon them. Whether it's just because the voice is only used to uh, in situations where people get locked up or are killed or however way, or um, simply because um, they don't use it that often. In either case, though. She uses this moment as a way to demonstrate her power. So I think this shows two things. One, the power that Hawat realizes she has now, where if she really wanted to, she could do whatever she wants. And then two, that Lady Jessica um, trusts Hawat, and she knows he's not the traitor. So there's a understanding that comes to both of them. For Jessica, that she trusts Hawat, that Hawat realizes this, and also for him to know that Jessica really wanted to betray House Atreides, that if she wanted to sow seeds of discord in the house, whatever it is, she very well could. And this leads to Hawat thinking that he is just the bull and she the matador. And this recalls so well the history of House Atreides with Duke Leto's father uh, being the matador that he was, uh, just fits in so perfectly. That brings us to the end of chapter 17. Really great chapter. Good interaction between Hawa and Lady Jessica. Um, they kind of have a understanding now where at the beginning of the chapter, it was distrust, it was misunderstanding, it was a whole lot of things. And now they've come to the point where um, I think the, the table needs to be reset and Jessica, Hawa, Leto, all of these different um, ideas that they had on how to progress with fooling the Harkonnens need to be readdressed. Uh, so great chapter and looking forward to getting more into it in the future. Thank you for your support. Please like this video, drop a comment. If you haven't, please go watch my writing update videos, my writing process videos. I am an epic fantasy writer, and ultimately I want you to enjoy my writing, not just other people's writing. So um, again, look into those. Thank you for your support, and I will see you next time.